Hello again and welcome to our May edition of Quick Kit. Let's get straight into it. Atmos have just announced the Shinobi 7. This monitor looks pretty awesome. It features a 1920x1200, 16x10 panel with a 2200 nits peak brightness. It features both HDMI 2 in and out ports, which are both capable of 4K 60p, and a single 3G SDI port that supports 2K 60p that will work as an input or an output. You can also cross convert on the monitor, which will be great for those wanting to loop the feed out to a wireless transmitter or another monitor. Otherwise, it will feature all the regular stuff you expect from an Atomos monitor and will even control the Zcam E2 series of cameras with the correct cable, which is pretty cool. It will be priced at £595 plus VAT, which makes it a really awesome, affordable option for people wanting a really good 7 inch monitor. It's available to pre order via the links below. Panasonic released the GH5 Mark II and announced the development of the GH6 earlier this month. We did a video covering this, so if you want some more detail on that, you can check it out here or via the May playlist in the description below. They also announced the development of a new Leica DG 25-50mm f1.7, which will be great for people wanting to stick to MFT and already own the 10-25, which was released back in 2019. Tokina announced their new 25-75mm T2.9 nearly a year ago now and earlier this month they made it available for pre-order which is now available on our website. This Super 35 standard zoom looks like it could be a nice option for owners of the Komodo C70 or C300 Mark III as well as any other Super 35 cameras. It's a new optical design that's been specifically made for this lens. It looks pretty compact and is rather light at just 2kg which for the cameras it's aimed at will be awesome for a range of different rigs. We are hoping to get one to test soon, so keep an eye out for our upcoming video on it. The Atlas Orion series of lenses have become incredibly popular anamorphic options over the past few years. And earlier this month, they announced a new SE or silver edition variant of them. The SE have tweaked optics and coatings, and though the look isn't massively different to the original, it does have some big differences when it comes to the flare. From the tests that Atlas have made available, they look to flare much easier have improved focus fall off and the saturation of the flares looks to have been toned down massively. They look really nice and you can check out some test footage via the links down below. Vazen released the first in their large format 1.8x anamorphic lenses a while back now, but they recently announced the next focal length in the set, the 50mm T2.1. This is going to sit as the widest focal length in the set currently, with a 135mm also coming to complete this 3 lens set. The 85mm performs really well considering its price point and I really want to take a look at them together once the 135mm hits the market as well. It's available to pre-order now via the link below. Another anamorphic lens to come out this month is on the more affordable end. Siriu have quietly released a new focal length to their 1.3x anamorphic set, a 75mm f1.8. This new focal length now brings the set to 4 focal lengths and considering their price, they can be a really nice entry point into shooting anamorphic. Let us know if you want to see a full review of the set down in the comments below. Lauer also released their first lens in the new line for them, the Argus 35mm f0.95 CF APO. This fast prime lens has been designed for APS-C coverage for Fuji X, Sony E, Nikon Z and Canon RF mount. So this could be an interesting series of lenses for Sony FS, Komodo and C70 camera users. It looks relatively light and compact given its apochromatic design and maximum aperture. It actually looks like it could be quite nice for video as Lauer makes some really nice manual focus mechanics and this lens has a 300 degree focus rotation. Given its price point, they could be a really nice set of lenses once Lauer add a couple of extra focal lengths. We'll have to see when that happens though. Format makes some stellar filters and early this month they released their new series of Ultra Cine Super Slim IRND filters. At only 2mm thick, these filters are half the thickness of your regular 4x5.65 filters which means you can reduce weight on your rig easily as well as stack two of them together in a regular 4mm filter tray. Format has made a 2mm filter tray that will be compatible with any map box that accepts ARRI standard width trays. The filters will be available in 5 ND strengths, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 1.2, 1.8 and 2.1. This is a pretty standard set of strengths. They are also really well priced because of the reduction on the amount of glass that is used and this means each filter costs just under £150 excluding VAT, which when we compare that to Format's Fantastic Firecrest series, that's less than half the price. If they perform as well as Format's other filters, 
these could be a great option for anyone wanting to cut down the weight of their kit or rig. Now let's look at some rigging, starting with Wooden Camera's new accessories for the Pocket 6K Pro. As with most Wooden Camera solutions, this will be available in three different kits, Base, Advanced and Pro, which will be available in V or Gold Mount. The cage that they've designed for the Pocket 6K Pro is a half cage and it looks like quite a nice solution with a good range of mounting positions across it. Tilter have been pretty busy. This month they have shown off their solutions for the Pocket 6K Pro, FX3 and C70. Tilter, did you watch my review of the Pocket 6K Pro? Because this looks really interesting and is exactly what I said would be awesome to see for the viewfinder. Tilter's solution for the 6K Pro looks as complete as we expect from Tilter now. The new cage looks really versatile and so do the different options for media mounting available now too. There's no price or availability yet, but I'm really, really excited to look at this set. Hopefully we can get this and all the other solutions on the market for the Pocket 6K Pro so we can put them all to the test and make a video for you guys. Let us know what you want to rig up on your Pocket 6K Pro in the comments below, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how the EVF relocator works. As well as the 6K Pro kit, Tilter also released their cage for the FX3. Again, as you expect from Tilter, the system looks incredibly complete and looks to integrate with the rest of their ecosystem really well. The cage itself can be used as a full or half cage depending on how you need to configure it. And the top handle included with the FX3 will also work fully. Tilter will be selling this in a range of kits depending on what you need. This is the same story with their C70 cage, which they also announced this month. This is a full cage similar in design to the rest of Tilter's kit and like the FX3 system, is available in several different kits. Using a cage or base plate with the C70 is pretty handy as without it, mounting tripod plates securely is a bit of a pain because of the mounting thread placement on the bottom of the camera. Bright Tangerine have released two sets of accessories, one for the Komodo and one for the C70. Their Komodo accessories consist of an expert kit, side and top plate kit, and top plate kit. The expert kit comes fully loaded with everything you may need to rig up your Komodo, but you can buy the side and top plate kits separately. This rig has been designed to be quick and reliable and given Bright Tangerine's past products, I bet this rig will be well thought out. Lastly, they have a DJI dovetail which is aimed to make transitions between gimbal and tripod setups much faster. The dovetail is designed to be paired with the Komodo base plate. They have also released a range of supports for different lens mount adapters consisting of the following. One for the Canon 0.71 expander, the Vocas RF to PL, the Metabones RF to PL, and the Kipatai Revolver. These supports will require you to use the left field side plate kit and top rail, or run stop top rail from Bright Tangerine 2 to work. For the C70, they released three different kits, Base, Advanced, and Expert, which have different levels of kit included, Base being the simplest and Expert being the most fleshed out. When it comes to individual pieces, they released a few different bits. A HDMI clamp which you can use with the left field side plate, a standard riser for their 15mm base plate. This mounts onto the base plate core so your camera is set to the correct height needed for use with 15mm rods. They have also made a top and side plate that come with these kits. The top plate looks really nice. They have also released two accessories for making transitions from gimbal to tripod faster. This was a DJI dovetail plate and a DJI riser kit for their 15mm base plate. As with any rigging, I really want to get my hands on it and rig it up in some different configurations before giving a full opinion. But Bright Tangerine stuff is always built really well and well thought out. The Red Komodo is an incredibly popular camera right now, and we've seen plenty of people release breakout box solutions for it. The latest being from Mutiny. This little box is Red certified, features timecode, genlock, run stop, and camera control, and looks to be pretty flexible when it comes to mounting. Let's look at some software. We use Resolve a lot, so it was nice to see Blackmagic releasing their 17.2 update for it earlier this month. This update introduced a range of things, but the standouts have to be improved startup time, live save is now on as default, and support for applying and managing crossfades in the Fairlight timeline. It's available to download now via Blackmagic's website. In our March edition of Quick Kit, we mentioned that Ari released a beta for the Sub 7 for the Alexa Mini LF. Well, this month, this came out of beta and was fully released. This update includes the incredibly requested Super 35 recording modes. We are wanting to do more content around ARRI, so let us know what you would want to see from us down in the comments below. Firmware version 2.1 is now available for the FX9, and this introduces the ability to output UHD up to 120 frames per second with the XCCA to Atomos's upcoming Ninja 5 Plus Pro kit. 
It also includes a tweak to the way white balance is handled, which should improve the presets on the FX9. It's available to download now via Sony's website. With Panasonic's other announcements earlier this month, also came the announcement of version 2.0 firmware for the GH5S. This will enable Pro's RAW over the HDMI in a few different formats. This could be an awesome announcement for any GH5S owner wanting to pair it with a Ninja 5. This will be available on the 9th of June from Panasonic's website. Zecam has also announced the Ipman S. The Ipman is a HDMI wireless streaming device that can switch between being a transmitter, receiver, or mobile transmitter. It features a HDMI in and a HDMI out for looping out in both TX and RX mode. There are a lot of features to this, so here's a brief breakdown of the key ones that Zcam have highlighted so far. The Ipman has a 50 meter line of sight range and the ability to stream wirelessly or via a USB-C to Ethernet adapter. Latency was not included in the spec right now, but we'll be getting a set into test as soon as possible, so keep an eye out for that. At its price point, this could be a really awesome solution and I can't wait to run some tests on them. Nanlite have been producing some fantastic lighting fixtures for a while now, and they recently announced their Evoke 1200 LED fixture. This is a high power draw 1200 watt fixture with a 120 degree beam angle with a claimed output comparable to a 2.5K HMI Fresnel, which if true, is pretty insane. It will be available in both daylight or tungsten models, uses a unique mounting system for flexibility, and will have all the bells and whistles you would expect from a Nanlite fixture. For people wanting a high output LED, this could be a really compelling option as there aren't that many options out there. I thought we'd try something new this month because I didn't want to leave anything out. So this is going to be a quick fire honorable mention section. Links to details about these are in the description below as well as everything else that I've mentioned in this video. Musashi Optical has announced the 29 to 120 mm T2.9 full frame cinema lens. Sound devices have released firmware version 7.13 for their Mix Pre systems. Aperture released version 1.6 of the Sidus Link app. Atomos released Atom OS 10.64 for the Ninja 5, which improves ProRes RAW for A7S 3 shooters. Ignite Digi released a bridge plate booster seat for their Keystone system. Shape released a 4K 12G SDI cable and a pivoting mount plate. Goodson released their Moza Air 2S gimbal. Blackmagic dropped the price of the Atom Mini Pro. Angelbird released a new adapter that allows you to use CFast 2.0 cards with Atomos devices. If you enjoyed this, please make sure you subscribe ready for next month's quick kit and let us know what kit you've picked up this month in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.